Let's bring in Ed Clissold of Ned Davis Research. So it's good to have you on. Here we are at these incredible levels. How reliant are we on rate cuts? And is that why we're here? I think that's part of the story. And it's not just rate cuts, but the fact that the economy is doing so well, inflation is coming down, and that's going to allow the Fed to, to cut rates um, and not panic and cut rates like we've seen the last few cycles, but instead go ahead and, and move it at, at a measured pace um, that will allow rates to come down, help, that would help earnings, that would help multiples. Um, and it's overall you know, a pretty benign Goldilocks environment. When do you think the first cut happens? How many do you think we need? Um, and what happens, do you think, to the market if it just doesn't go according to plan? Well, so the Fed's been pretty clear. March is pretty much off the table. We think May's probably the, the most likely, but June you know, is quite possible as well. Uh, but the Fed's also been signaling they're going to go slowly, and that's actually a good thing. If you look back historically, when the Fed has moved slowly, that is fewer than five cuts per year, the market's done really well. Really well. s and up about 24% in the next year. I wouldn't say that's going to happen this time, but you know, that's a pretty bullish historical perspective. Let's just say when the Fed's moved very quickly, uh, five times or more in a given year, the market's you know, only at about 5%. And you, know, you think about the last few times they've done that, 2019, 2007, 2001, now, those were all cases where the economy really shut down. And that, you know, so it's not, it's not necessarily that lower rates are better. It's why the Fed is going lower. Uh, it really tells you what it means for the market. Well, of course. I mean, we're, we, we are hoping... I would dare I say, assuming that the Fed's going to cut because it can, not because it has to. It, it can because inflate. They're confident. They use the word confident. They've seen enough to say we're confident inflation is in fact heading closer to two percent. Yeah, and, and the Fed's done a very, a, a very soft pivot in what they're they're targeting. It used to be a nominal Fed funds rate. Now it's a, a real Fed funds rate. So you ask yourself. If inflation is maybe not at 2% of their target, but if it's getting close to that and the, the Fed funds rate is north of 5 do we really need a almost 3% real Fed funds rate? And if you look back historically, that's actually been very restricted. So if they cut two times, three times this year, that'll get us in the range where they're not necessarily super accommodated, but they're restrictive enough to maybe help the, prevent the economy from overheating too much. Um, and so that's a pretty benign environment. So, yes, that's what we're looking for two to three times. If we if we take the Fed out of the equation, do you see other risks or or not so much? I mean, economy good, earnings seem to be decent, especially with the with the mega caps. You got you know theoretically some more money coming in off the sidelines into the equity market. Yeah, yeah. So the way we do things at NDR, we, we put things in the four pillars. So you have the macro, the fundamentals, the technical, and the sentiment. And so the one of those four that is most worrisome at the moment is the sentiment. And we've had a, a great run since the October lows. And so our sediment composite, which includes seven different uh, indicators of the sediment, things like polls of individual investors, call ratios, that's been in its optimism zone for 50 trading days. And that is uh, the 10th longest streak on record. So once you, you move out of the optimism zone, once kind of the froth goes away from the market, yeah, usually you're, you're kind of mixed for two to three months. Um, and then the, the, the rally can continue from there. So you know, the, the challenge with this is, of course, sentiment can remain optimistic for a long period of time. As Keynes says, the market can be irrational longer than you can remain solvent. So it's not necessarily a, a sell signal at the moment, but we need to be aware of that. And to get a pullback actually would be somewhat healthy because if you look at these, these runs of extreme optimism, when it's gotten, say, over 100 days, that's when that's really led to, to bear markets like in 2011 and in 2021. Right. So it almost was healthy to get a little bit of a, of a breather here. 